so strange, isn't it, how you avoid trying to get pregnant yeah. your whole life. And then when you decide it, it becomes that you want to, it becomes so consuming. Yeah. But you also assume that it's our given right yep. to have a baby. Yeah. And that's so far from the reality for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So you decided to go and I had start. to. I had no other choice. IVF yeah. was my only option. Right. So then I got married again, but to science. Yeah. You know. And uh, to, to a... Um, a gaggle of you know scientists and uh, doctors and nurses and you know that the, it's almost like a Marx Brothers film you know mm. you just everywhere you go there's so many people involved in in trying to help you get there so I did a lot of a that lot. a lot a to lot, the lot. point that you even lost count yeah no I deliberately stopped counting did you really you have to what do you you know if you've got something definite you know you've sort of got to respond to it yeah and I didn't want to give up even though I wanted to give up, yeah. But I, but the, you know, the big part of me wasn't going to give up. No. And because um, every time you get a negative result, it's devastating. Like it's just you feel like it's it's another death. You know, it's what, that heavy. What kept you going? Up? Did was there any point where you? Because I love that you say nothing good comes from giving up, which I think's an incredible thing to live by, saying to live by. But uh, time after time, and there would there's, there's over twenty IVF attempts. Yeah. Um, what how did you keep going? How did you go, I'm going to give this another go, getting disappointment after disappointment? Look, there are a lot of people out there doing IVF. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that now more so than at the time because of all the people that have come out of the woodwork since I told my story. Mm. And it's very, very common. Um, so I knew I wasn't alone. I knew it was a numbers game. I knew many people um, in my world that had gotten there. Um, maybe only after five attempts. Right. Um, Do you know what the average is for IVF for women to fall pregnant? It's not good. Uh, it? It's not good at certain ages. You know, the, the first thing they show you is the graph, and right. you don't want to see that graph. Right. You know, because then that takes away all hope. Right. So every time I meet with a new doctor, I've seen the graph, don't pass on the thing. graph. Mm. I know the reality. Um, and then you know, every, I mean, your the quality of your eggs plummets at such a rapid rate after a certain age. Right. And um, that's part of the graph reality because you'll see the age and then, you know, you'll see the decline. But um, I knew that uh, there was a chance and I kept tempting that chance. I did fall pregnant on my third, third attempt, right. but I miscarried. Um, so I kept banging my head up against the brick wall until I had a very good doctor who said to me, you might want to consider moving to donor egg. Mm. And he was great about how he introduced that idea to me. And uh, he showed me examples of um, clients and patients of his that had gone in that direction that had great results. Right. And then he um, suggested I go and see uh, some doctors who, well, I call them my pimp doctors, but right. they pimp you out to, well, you know, the country that you choose. because. Donor egg is a lot more complicated in Australia than it is overseas. Right. Firstly, you've got to know who they are. They've got to know who you are. Right. So there's no anonymity. Secondly, you, you, m for most part, and I've since been drawn to the fact that there, there is um, a very philanthropic, um, I think it's called Donor Egg Australia group that, of women that offer their eggs through that. But right. primarily you've got to advertise through uh, uh, some sort of, uh, there's a magazine up here called Sydney's Child and you put in a personals ad and you look for someone that feels generous to undergo their whole IVF treatment to give you their eggs wow. just to help out another family. And that's a big ask because IVF There's no tough. money can be exchanged. You can't can exchange it? money. It can't be some, something you buy. Right. Um, so that was tough. And uh, I knew after seeing these other pimp doctors, they're brilliant too, I love them so much. They make it all uh, very user friendly that they'd had a lot of success through Greece. That was their first country that they struck up this relationship with. Yeah. And that the guy in Greece was a Greek Australian who was trained at Monash and that he had the most successful IVF clinic in Athens. Yeah. And so um, they have donor banks. So you can go, there's anonymity, they don't know mm -hmm. who you are, you don't know who they are, you know their age right. is the only fact you'll, you'll get and you'll know that they're in great health. Right. And so they donate their eggs and they get, um, 
they get, I suppose, uh, their money through out-of-pocket expenses. That's how they justify some payment. Right. Because they would have to stop working because you can't, you know, you can't manage your life as you normally do when you're doing IVF. So, right. you know, their travel expenses or whatever, there is a fee that's paid to cover their expenses. Right, okay, right, right. And, um, and they have great success with it. So we packed our bags and, well, I did, and went to Greece. Did you go over by yourself? I went the very first time, because I've been many times, uh, I went with George. And then uh, that was the first attempt. He left and I stayed for the second because the first attempt was negative. Mm -hmm. Also, I knew my odds went up dramatically from point something to 50% right. with donor egg. Right. So, um, so then George left and then my mother um, was there with me for the second attempt and we got pregnant to the pregnancy that I write about yeah. uh, in the book um, on the second attempt. Yeah, right. 